Okay, part two of my video for 29th of December 2020. I ran out of time quite quickly on that last one. So um, uh, I was about to talk about gold, so we'll talk about gold now. This gold's been been interesting uh, since the summer of 2018. We've been in a nice bull run. Um, more recently, you can see that steep bull trend. Uh, the bull trend was broken. This is a classic example of when a bull trend is broken, we don't necessarily... Uh, start turning into a bear trend. More often than not, we actually trade sideways, consolidate. And what we had here, in fact, was a bull flag. Uh, if I just draw in the bull flag trend line. There we go. So um, we had a bull flag. I spotted that quite early on, so I'm quite pleased about that, at least. Uh, and we were just waiting, really, while the market traded in no man's land for us to break higher, give us the buy signal, jump into a long position. Um, here was actually where we were looking to short it for obvious reasons. We had the Fibonacci, the 100 day moving average and the trend line all coinciding in the same spot. So we were looking to short into that. Now it did work initially, but then we just drifted sideways again, which was characteristic of this market over the last three months, four months. There are lots of sideways trading. Uh, as the 100 day moving average diverged away from that, um, the upper trend line of the bull flag, I thought this would probably signal we were ready to break. So I took out the suggestion of a short in that uh, high 1480 area and instead looked to buy on a break above the 100 day moving average. Now that worked and we pushed higher to 1515 in fact. 1515 is quite significant if we look at this trend line going back to the beginning of October joining up all the peaks that comes in almost exactly at 1515. In fact, it does come in exactly at 1515. 61.8% fib is also at 1515, 1514, 1515. So there's no huge surprise that we've rejected that level. Now, it's less important than the fact that we've broken above the bull flag in a bull trend, but that doesn't mean that we can't reverse from 1515, maybe get down to 1492, which could hold the downside because I'm still longer term bullish. But I wouldn't rule out. Gold is a funny old thing. Gold can spike down, have a violent spike down, um, take out all the longs and then move. So just be aware of that. It's not out of the question that we come down as far as 14.75. Now hang on a sec. I'm just going to redraw that trend line because... Um, I think I like this trend line. I think I'm going to stick with 14.85 in fact. Okay, so would I be shorting up at 14, 14, 14, 15? Yeah, maybe I would be with a stop above maybe 14, 18, 15, 18. Um, because it's a relatively low risk trade. And if we do dip down, yeah, we could certainly see the mid 14, 90 area. Uh, and I will be recommending a long down in the mid 14, 80 area. We are overbought, so it wouldn't surprise. Um, but I wouldn't go mad on these shorts. I'd keep it quite small, keep it quite tight. And you're definitely going to have to be prepared to buy back into a long position on a break above 15.19. Oil. Oil's had a significant breakout too. Now then, look, this chart goes back to uh, beginning of the year. Beginning of the year. There we go. There's February. I've got a trend line on there from February um, and I've got a trend line on here from April. We've broken through what I thought would be very significant um, resistance. I saw that as a selling opportunity. The green 500 day moving average coinciding with the uh, trend line going back to April. Uh, we were very overbought, so I thought, yeah, that looks fairly obvious. We're just going to turn around and go lower, but we didn't. So shorts were stopped. Oh, there's another good reason for it, too. Um, 100 week moving average was okay, a little bit lower, but um, the week before, once we rejected it and came down, I thought it was fairly obvious we were going to continue to go down. We didn't. So last week surprised me, but that has given us the buy signal that I was, uh, that I'd written about. Now, obviously, we need to stay above $61 for oil bulls to remain in control and build on that breakout. And if we don't, we've got a false break. And if we were to end the year, don't forget, uh, tomorrow's the 30th. I think we do trade on the 31st as well. So we've got two days. Bulls have got to hang, hold this price above $61 for two days. And if they can't do that, then that might signal a false break. And the bulls here would be in a trap. Those who had bought into longs on the break high would then be in a trap and that would look rather nasty. So just watch that $61 area. Uh, we're happy to be long as long as we hold above there, despite the fact we're pretty overbought.
don't do too many videos on the US stock markets because basically they've just been in a bull trend. Uh, but they do they do chart nicely. This one goes back two years. This chart, uh, nice trend line here, which was very significant. Um, as you can see, we broke up through that trend line at the beginning of November. We had a little retest for anyone who hadn't managed to buy into a long position, a chance to get back in on the retest of that trend line. Nice support area, um, an obvious support area. And boom, off we've gone. A little bit of a negative candle on Friday, but mm, certainly not a sell signal, despite the fact that we're very overbought. Shorting into a bull market like this is just insane. I know lots of people have been doing it. I get plenty of comments and emails asking me to help people who happen to be trapped in a hideous short position uh, just don't do it it doesn't make sense because the problem is even when you are right and you have picked a top more often than not the market doesn't crash it doesn't collapse and just trade sideways okay sometimes you do get little moves like that but more often than not you're looking for an even bigger move anyway it's much easier just to sit back and buy the dips uh, I'm just throwing some trend lines on here to see if I can make sense of anything. No, not really. Yeah, maybe I'll leave that one on. Um, anyway, look, we're going up. We, we remain buyers of dips, and I won't get bearish about stock markets until we see something like a big head and shoulders pattern or something that tells me uh, that the sellers are starting to take control of this market. They're certainly not at the moment. This is a weekly chart of the DAX as we approach the all-time high up here at 13. Uh, 596, 13,596, holding below it. So clearly the um, European stock market, certainly the DAX, they got a hell of a lot of catching up to do with the US stock market. So we've been powering ahead um, for a number of years. Um, it would be interesting to see a break above 13,600. So I assume that would be a nice buy signal. So it would be something worth getting into. We're only about 300 ticks away from a buy signal. Who knows? Maybe we'll even cover that over the next two days. Okay, that's it for me for this week, for this year. In fact, um, if you are watching this video on a delayed basis, I'm going to show you just one second. Okay, if you're watching this uh, video on YouTube and uh, you're not a subscriber, then you're watching it a few days late. I sometimes do release these a few days after I've released them for subscribers. And if you would like to um, visit our website, it is, hang on a second, there we go daytradeideas.co.uk come and have a visit and um, see what we've got on offer plenty of subscriptions for to help you make consistent profits um, in forex in commodities in stock index futures and even in fixed income